All right, welcome back to the channel. We're back here in American Truck Simulator. Today we are in Carson City, and we are heading to the city of Tonopah. Tonopah. Yeah, that's where we're heading. And I think we're picking up a John Deere Harvester T670. So what we've got going on here is a standard low boy, uh, just an SCS low boy, but we have the Mac R, and this is a dirty skin for it. The dirty skin, so obviously the truck is Harvin, and the dirty skin is by Muddy's Workshop. I also have the Trilex rims from Mr. Overfloater, so those look good. Just on the truck, not on the trailer. And let's go ahead and get in, and I'll talk to you about the rest. The Secret Service has your back, and so do I. Let's go. Oh, yeah, and Morgan's here. So we're just four minutes, yeah, you know, four or five minutes away. Should be a short little trip to pick up before we head over to Tonopah, or however you say that. Someone let me know how you really say that, because <laughs> I'm just kind of guessing here. Alright, let's pick her up. Yes, it is in fact the T670 Harvester by John Deere. It's a noisy engine, especially when those windows are down.
a little tricky to get into reverse gear. I'll explain that in just a little bit. Still learning the shift pattern here. I like having this window though. These day caps are nice. Let's go straighten her out just a little bit. There we go. It's kind of nice to have multiple reverse gears. Shifting in reverse. Gotta love it. That's pretty cool. Didn't think I'd actually get to use all those reverse gears, but there you go. Alright, let's turn her off, get her hooked up. Alright, there's our harvester. There she is. There are those who would like to see you fail. It's not going to happen. Let's go. Alright, let's get the window up. Normally I'd be running it down in the yard, but it's kind of loud. So, it's having a little, little bit of an issue finding reverse. Because this is a new uh, transmission that I'm working with. It's not new to ATS. It's been around for a few years, but it's the first time that I've seen it. Looks like that truck's seen better days. Looks like my truck after a couple videos. Looks like she probably was able to stay upright though, unlike some of my videos. Alright, so we got the harvester up here. It's clocking in almost 42,000 pounds. Not too bad, but here's where it's going to be a little bit interesting today. Um, this is a... what is this? So I've got... it's obviously the Mac R. It's an ENDT 676. It is 285 horsepower. So not very powerful for hauling more than 40, you know, almost 40,000 pounds. So that's the engine. That's what's going to make it a little, a little tricky today. A little bit of that Jake. I don't like the Jake in here. I find it to be very unrealistic. Because you're it can take you from 40 down to 10 in just a few seconds. Um, but the transmission is kind of what we want to talk about today. This is a 12-speed maxi torque transmission. And with the with all of the patterns. Uh, well, it's a, it's an adapted pattern. The original Maxi Tour, it was a completely different shifter, so they had a completely different way of going about doing it. There we go. 
get her slowed down. But this is a 12-speed manual. Um, it was in a lot of the uh, Mack trucks. Again, it's a Maxi Torque. And the way the pattern goes is basically like a 10-speed. Well, it starts like a 10-speed. This is actually a very completely different uh, transmission. And essentially what you want to do is you want to start off um, splitter back to you. Low uh, bottom left hand side is first and that you're going to actually split all the gears. So if I go and split it forward, that's actually going to be kind of like my second gear because we're only going to stay. We're going to do all 10 gears and we're going to stay all in the lower range. If the camera can see this. This is in the low range. The only time that we're going to get up to the higher range is for two things. That's for low gears and it's reverse. That's it. And all the shifting is going to happen here with the splitter. So splitter back, splitter forward, and splits her in high from direct. Put it back, go into direct two. Forward will go direct high, and so on. And that's basically the transmission. Yeah, the transmission is uh, it's a little weird. It mentally it kind of throws you for a loop because especially when you're looking for a reverse in the low gears, generally you can always find those in the lower range. And in this truck, it's the only two things that you can find in the upper range. Very weird. So I'm still kind of trying to wrap my mind around it. Um, the 10 speed maxi torque is very similar, except it doesn't have the, uh, the additional low gears in the upper range. That's pretty much it. And that's what essentially makes it the 12 gears. So you got your first, you got your five in the lower range, and they're all split. That makes 10, and then the extra two are your low gears in the upper range. Take those two uh, low gears in the upper range away, and you got your 10 speed. So, but you would still go and hit the upper range to get into reverse. So, that's kind of the way it's mapped out. Um, and like I said, it was kind of adapted. The the entire shifter is laid out completely different in trucks that were designed with this type of transmission. And it's weird, it's actually, if I understand it correctly, I believe it's actually two different transmission boxes. There's like a primary and an auxiliary. Um, kind of like what you would have in like a, like any, any transmission that would have two sticks in it, or even three sticks. You essentially have separate boxes. And the two box, the second box is really just to control your range, essentially, if I understand it correctly. Control whether you're in the lower or the upper range. And I think a lot of reason why they did that is, I mean, I'm just guessing, I really don't know a whole lot about transmissions, but you have five reverse gears on this truck. Five of them, which is kind of crazy. I don't know why they would do that, but maybe there were a lot of people, especially in, uh, like they had to do a lot of backing, like dump trucks and things like that. And they had to back up for greater distances. So you have an entire, I mean, except for the low gears, your upper range is dedicated toward these five reverse gears. And maybe because it's so intricate with the reverse gears, you have to have it in its own, I don't know, have it in its own box. Or you have to design the box that way then. I'm not sure. So, we are really kind of struggling up this hill now. This is when it's really showing why you can struggle, really struggle with 285 horsepower. And I'm only carrying, like I said, what are we doing? Oh yeah, 40, a little under 42,000 pounds. I mean, she's going to get up there, but it's just going to take a while. Uh, the transmission, um, by the way, so it is a 12 speed. It's a Maxi Tour TRTXL. Uh, initial gear 14.44, finals 3.87. So she's made to haul. She's not fast. And that's why I kind of chose a shorter route today. We're looking at about three game, game hours left. So let me know. Have you guys actually tried this transmission? This is a uh, this is a mod, free mod on Steam Workshop. And if you guys paid attention to any of my earlier videos when I was talking about the 15-speed, 
which was done by Fury 6, well, that same guy did this mod as well. And it's essentially, it's, it's pretty simple. There's not an actual mod that you subscribe to. All it is is simply adding two files to your profile that you want to run this in. And that's pretty much it. There's a couple other steps inside the settings. And at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you a little bit more about the pattern. Um, I showed it basic, but I'll sh go into depth a little bit more. And I'm also going to show you how to make sure we get this installed and set up correctly. There's one thing that I didn't do right. Um, it's not explicitly stated in the instructions. And for whatever reason, I just didn't. I didn't take this step, and it got me about 90% of the way there, but I couldn't get reverse 3 to reverse 5. Those three gears I couldn't get, but I did one small thing and I got it, so I'll share that with you too if you have any issues trying to get all the gears and get the pattern right. Well, for now, we're just kind of driving through the wilderness. I'm probably going to stop, get a screenshot, and I'll be back with you in a little bit. All right, well, we're back. We are about an hour of game time out, and we are going really slow. I'm just trying to get back up to 25. Got my four ways on to let them know that I'm slowed way down. What happened was I took a very minor hill, and I missed a shift. And I lost about <laughs> two and a half gears worth. So I was trying to switch into from 4 direct up to 4 high, and I ended up having to take it back down to uh, 2 high just to bring it back. Because I, that's what happens when you miss a shift on a hill. And that's why, I, yeah, I was trying to float the gears. And I've been doing pretty good. I've driven this truck a couple times before this video. I've been doing pretty good. But, um, missed that one. Which is fine. Looks like we're in 35 now. And that took me about five miles to get up to about 35. I was down as low as 15. Um, so let me know, have you guys tried this transmission and truck combo? Or have you, are you guys aware of this transmission? Let's get this off, it's annoying. Down to 25. Um, do you like it? Do you think it's eh, whatever? I think it's different. I like trying different transmissions and you have different shift patterns. And of course, every time you get a different transmission, obviously depending on the specs that you put into it, it's going to act completely different. Like, there is no way that this is anywhere near the 15 speed that you saw me driving a couple of videos ago. Um, there's no way it has anything to do with a 13 or an 18. It's kind of fun. Um, it's an older, older transmission. They made it, when did they, they, I think they made it back in the 80s. And uh, I know that trucks that were made in the 90s still had these, but, you know, they haven't, they haven't, I don't think they made these for about at least 20 years. And, which is a shame because everyone says that these are great transmissions. Keep left. And then turn left. Turn left. Thanks, Morgan. I wasn't even paying attention. Just chatting away. Let's see from the outside a little bit. That dirty truck. Kind of like that skin. I like skins that show like dirt and rust and stuff. Kind of gives it some personality. And there's definitely a place where you, you know, you're building kind of a show truck. You want it to look nice, put lots of chrome on it. And the reality is, 90% of the trucks I see on the road are like this. <laughs> they're dirty. They're basic. They're older. They're they've got they've got wear on them. And that's just what happens because they always have to be in service. That's what makes the profits for the company. Uh, same thing for owner operators. I mean. It's the longer, the more it's in service, the more money it's making you. So, so you don't always get to pay attention to all those small elements like 
cleaning and looking at rust and stuff like that. Well, plus, you know, these aren't engines that blow at 100,000 or 200,000 miles. You know, that's pretty... That's only like a fifth of its life to, lifespan. These, some of these engines... There we go. Oh. Some of these engines, they go... See, I missed it again. This is what happens. Now I gotta go back to three direct. I gotta skip that three high. But yeah, the, some of these engines, they'll last for a million miles. And then so... A million miles before, the truck looked nice. <laughs> but maybe not anymore, and it's old. It's outdated a little bit. But I think it gives a personality. I love this Mac R. Harvin did such a great job with this. Missed it again. I'm missing it on hills. I think I gotta go into it faster. Um, ironically, the only time I'm missing it is the time that it's really gonna hurt me. That one was a very small incline, so I was able to save it and bring it back. But uh, that other one, it was the same thing. I was going like 30, 35, and I had to drop it down to 15 just to get it going again. Anyway, about 19 minutes out. We are in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing around here. wonder if Morgan knows where he's going. But yeah, as I said uh, earlier, once we get down to the uh, destination, we'll drop her off and then I'll show you a little bit more about the mod for the 12-speed, show you a little bit about the pattern. So, I, I do have chapter, uh, you know, titles down in the description, so if you just want to jump ahead to that, that's cool, and not see me driving through the middle of nowhere, getting stuck on a hill. Whoa, that was fast. I don't think I'm going to make that. I am not going to make that, no way. I'm not even going to try. Oh, maybe when we're really slow. Jeez, that was horrible. That was horrible. What an idiot! But when you take that turn, that's when you flip. And I've done it twice on this channel. You think maybe the third time I'm learning. Anyway. Come here, we'll get our four ways on. I'm going to leave the windows up because this is a loud one. This actually, um, this engine came with the Mac R pack. The it's been my honor and duty to see you through this the ENDT 676. Um, I love Zmod's engines and his ENDT. I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm not a big fan. Because I've got my, my volume for engines maxed out and it's just, it's really quiet. Maybe, maybe that's, I don't know. <laughs> I would assume that if it was a loud engine versus this or a more quiet and docile one, that Zmods did. My inclination is maybe the louder one is more correct. I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just my preference. It's probably the only time where I'm gonna say, you know what, I can't get behind the Zmods one. And I've I've definitely had preferences before between Zmods and another one, but that's one that it's just not not my favorite. I I tried it the first time, ran it once, and I was like, you know what? It's not doing it for me. Not to get down on Zmods. Guy works so hard, puts out so many. I think I have, I have at least 20 of his engines. That's probably all of them. And all the environmental packs, and the Peterbilt, and the Kenworth, and the International, and all that. All right, we are here. Go ahead and get her shut off. And. Check in with me again in a second, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this 12-speed. Okay, so welcome back. So we are just right... That's where we dropped off, right behind us. 
So we're just kind of chilling out here. I am going to take you through the shift pattern. If you look at the shifter in the truck, that is an actual, that's the representation of the transmission of the uh, shifter that would normally come with these 10 speed or 12 speed maxi torques. And if you see, it has like two splitters. The one on the bottom, usually, I, I think this is correct. I've seen it on a couple trucks. Usually they make a distinction between whether you're in L, like low, that's for all the main gears, then there's neutral, and then there's also R for reverse. That simulates basically your range. And then the second second uh, splitter there is an actual splitter, and that is what you're using to shift. And in this case, rather than if you see on video, so if I have the splitter in the backward, let me see if that, that should be better for the camera. If I have the splitter back, then that is kind of like my low version. In the Mac, they call that the direct version. And when I move it forward, that's high. So back, forward is high, back is direct. And in order to get direct on this splitter that you see in the truck, the splitter will be, I believe, to the right. And then to move it into high, you move it to the left and you switch it back and forth. So you don't have a splitter on the side. The splitter is on top in the front, normally where your range would be. And then the range is controlled by another splitter, not a splitter, but it's another dial there on the bottom where you put it into your different modes. That would simulate taking you into the upper range, putting you essentially in the reverse stage. Um, so adapting it to an Eaton Fuller shifter is a little weird, but that's basically how it's done. All right, so just to run down real quick, we got the splitter back, and I have it in the lower lower left-hand corner. That is first. We're at first direct. Splitter goes forward. That's one high, okay? First direct, first high. Move it back to direct and then go into second. Then you have second high, splitter forward, splitter moves back, and then you go into third, splitter goes forward, now you're in third high, back into fourth, now you're in fourth direct, splitter forward, fourth high, and we keep doing that, splitter back, five direct, and then splitter forward, five high. And at that point, you're not going any farther. You've gone through your 10 gears. If you needed anything else, you needed it to begin with. And that was in the low gears, in which case, what we want to do is put our splitter back. We'll go up on the range. So it's not down, it's up. And then we'll move over to the lower left. The lower left-hand corner is where we're going to find our low low and splitter forward low high. Those are our two low gears. Otherwise, what we're going to do is this mod was created. They have to kind of work around some of the things that ATS has built. So with the still in the rain in the upper range, we're going to make sure the splitter is back. And then we're going to go in the upper left. That is reverse one. And then reverse two through five are basically going to follow your initial gears Two three, four, and five. So normally, yeah, in the lower range, we had first over here, but in the upper range, that spot is taken by the low gears, which we low, low, and low, high is done with the splitter. But reverse in the upper is done first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And uh, that's just kind of crazy. I'm sure that there's a reason for it. They made lots of transmissions this way. And, uh, I mean, I wonder how many times they actually went through and used, you know, four, reverse four and reverse five. And I tried to back up a little bit with it, and the trailer started getting pretty squirrely. Uh, but if you're doing that in a dump truck, you're not really worried about that. If you're not hauling anything and, you know, you don't have to worry about a trailer, then maybe that speed is more beneficial. So five reverse gears first for everything um now let me show you a couple things that you need to think about when you're going to get this mod which isn't really a mod um 
installed, set up, so that you can get working. There's a few things that I missed at first, and I want to bring your attention to it. So let's check them out. Now that we have all the files put into our profile, now we need to go into options, into controls. Make sure you have H shifter, you should be because you're shifting. And then what you want to do, and this is what the profile, the two profile or the two files that went into your profile, that's what this did. It gave you this drop down so you don't just see Eaton Fuller 10, Eaton Fuller 13, Eaton Fuller 18. You also see the max torque. Uh, maxi torque 10 speed and maxi torque 12 speed you also i also have these 15s because this is a separate mod also by fury 6 and so it gives you that drop down and it's a combination of being able to have that in the drop down and a combination of the transmission that you choose which i'm going to tell you in a second that's going to allow you to have the correct shift pattern um, when you're shifting so we have the maxi torque 12 speed in here that's step two step one was the files the next step we need to do is actually go in and we need to make sure that we have the correct transmission in the truck so let's get into that okay so we're here and ready to edit the truck we put in our engine chose our chassis and we come to the transmissions now there's a couple things and this is what i did wrong you want to make sure that you're searching for a 12 speed but this was my mistake I go down here and I see 12 speed and I have lots of different 12 speeds here because I have the uh, Eaton Fuller transmission mod. But when I put just a random 12 speed like this one right here, what happened was I got most everything working except for when I went to the upper range and I did R1, I did R2 and that was fine. When I went to try to activate reverse three, reverse four and reverse five, nothing happened and that's because I chose just a standard 12 speed what you need to do and what wasn't entirely clear at least from my point of view in the discussion was that you have to make sure that you're using one of the two 12 speeds that actually came with the Mac R truck in order to do that we go in here and uh, let's go to the content filters Let's disable all of them and only check the one that says Mac R series. These are the ones that came with the truck. So we can close that. Now we've got a five speed, 10 speed, 10 speed, 13, 13. So let's narrow it down a little bit. I'll put in 12 SPD and boom. These are the two transmissions that you need to be using to have full functionality with this, um, with this maxi torque 12 speed once you choose one of these you will everything will work including reverse three reverse four and reverse five and again that's something that i messed up on or it wasn't clear to me but those are the five steps make sure you add the files to your profile and you can find that again i'll put the link down below but you'll find that in the discussion section for the mac r on steam you want to make sure that you select the 12 speed maxi torque from the drop down in the control settings within American Truck Simulator. You want to make sure that you have the correct transmission like I just showed you here. Make sure you're filtering for Mac R series. And then the last thing is you need to learn the patterns and that is he kind of walks through and tells you more about what should be it says bottom left is one make sure you have the splitter back that's drive or yeah that's the direct and then move the splitter forward for high and then he'll show you all the different patterns he'll explain it so if you have any questions obviously um, if you have any questions for me 
then maybe I can answer that. I know Fury 6 is really good at getting back, but when I tried to leave a question for him on that post, and obviously it wasn't his decision, it's basically Harvin's uh, mod, and Fury 6 was just one of the discussions on there. For whatever reason, the discussion is closed and you can't um, ask any more questions. So if you have any questions for me, uh, if you missed any steps, need clarification on how to get this thing installed, all the settings on ATS and make sure you have the right transmission, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing and that's going to do it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Take care.